years ago, I was head of the School of Education and Social Work here at Sussex. So it's a great pleasure to be back on campus among such beautiful scenery, seagulls and friends. I just really wanted to make a few brief observations really on, on what the panel have, have presented, a very rich and, and diverse set of presentations over the course of the last uh, hour or so. And five presentations, whereas in some of the other rooms today there's three or four. And <laughs> It's been a very difficult position, but I, I, I did want to alert you, I guess, to, to, to two recurrent themes and then just say a little bit about um, uh, what I took as being a key issue from each of our presenters' papers. The, the two recurrent themes that I heard throughout all of the presentations was one about power struggles and dynamics. I think in every presentation, the questions of power, questions of contestation, questions of resistance, questions of imposition were, were clear, but in very different <coughs> ways. And I think related to that, throughout all the presentations, there was the question of the relationship between, um, between agency, the capacity of people to do something different, and processes of subjectivation. That is, being made a subject within a particular context by others or by processes which are beyond, seemingly beyond immediate control. And if I turn to Catherine's presentation, first of all, I think one of the most interesting things from that, for me anyway, was the question of un unintended consequences of biomedical surveillance. I was truly disturbed by the levels, as indeed some other people in the room were, the levels of surveillance that these women were subjected to. I mean, not only the the maximum number of sexual intercourses they might have in a week, but the, the collection of a range of artifacts, bringing them backwards and forwards, good heavens, that was a real eye-opener for me. But, but more intriguingly were the unintended consequences of that trial, both for women and for men, and for community perceptions. People work actively with the processes to which they are sub subjected in ways that are creative and often quite unpredictable, I think, in their effects. Margaret, when it came to your presentation, I was particularly struck by issues of power, issues of power struggle. Um, and in particular, the power struggle between, on the one hand, an interesting alliance between the power of political elites and the power of the grassroots. And on the other hand, the power of science and biomedicine. That, that quite, quite clearly, this combination of the premier of China and high political dignitaries and grassroots people purchasing this new service was in direct opposition to what it is that science, biomedicine, is usually defined as asserting. Now, that's not unique to China. In fact, the HIV experience early in the epidemic took precisely that form. Science at that time had relatively little to offer. People took power, resisted, and moved things forward in creative ways. And Harkin, when it came to your presentation, I was intrigued by quite the obverse, in a sense, how access to food and services for the refugees you were talking about was conditional upon entry into an HIV citizenship. Good heavens above, talk about a process of subjectivation there. You know, to get the food you need, to get the life that's bearable, you have to spend your time in the clinic having the, having the test, and so on and so forth. And when it came to Alice's um, presentation, again, I was I'm both reminded of what I took for breakfast this morning in terms of nutraceuticals, um, but rather than, in fact, a, a good traditional English breakfast, but that's because I come from Australia now, but the things are a bit different and nutraceuticals have taken off in a way that they probably haven't done yet in Brighton anyway. But anyway, in that particular, in that particular presentation, I guess I was, I was intrigued by the way is in which this whole process has given rise to new forms of knowledge generation in the form of the scientific academies you've described. I was I mean, goodness knows what they're up to. But no, of course, science is contested. There is the science that universities do, that pharmaceutical laboratories do, and there's the science that these new academies will do, of course. And the emergence of the new publics and the new consumers, which again you talked about uh, very convincingly. And then, Catherine, your final presentation today raised for me the question, the fundamental question of the relationship between health consumers and, and the pharmaceutical industry. Once again, I think displaying this issue of agency, how health consumers, certainly in the context you're looking at here in the UK, campaign for new drugs, campaign for access to, to, to pharmaceuticals that are not there. Um, quite the opposite in the sense of 
some of the, the poorer world context that we heard described for others, where I'm not sure that these things were the result of active grassroots campaigns, but actually were but the, the, the end product of a process by which others know best. Um, but fascinating presentations, I think, all of them, but which are tied together in those rather interesting ways. Now, we have, in fact, got time, four minutes, for any questions or comments before we move to the other session. So it's my pleasure, really, to turn the floor over to yourselves. I will ask you, though, to be really brief. <laughs>